I'm really excited to, to welcome you to Museum London Center, The Forks. So good to see people out at public events, uh, seeing art and listening to artists. This is amazing. Uh, I have, it's my great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Angie Quick and, and Margot Williamson. Um, Margot has a show currently on display at Museum London. Um, she's traveled here from Toronto to be with us. Angie, many of you will know, is a London-based artist. She's um, a self-taught painter and poet working here. She's known for her large oil paintings, exploring flesh in a manner both historical and contemporary. Her practice experiments with the nature of language and sensation in visual and performative context. Her solo exhibition, The Moonlight Made Me Do It, was held at the Macintosh Gallery this past winter. And she will be featured in a solo exhibition, Make Me Less Evil, at Museum London in winter 2023. The Pittsburgh-born, Toronto-based Margot Williamson, has shown with major galleries and institutions in New York, Los Angeles, London, UK, and Toronto. She's also a writer and filmmaker. Her work has been covered by Freeze, Art Forum, Vogue, The New York Times, The Believer, and others. She has published a book of paintings, I Could See Everything, published by Coach House uh, Press. Her feature-length, no-budget art video, <laughs> Teenager Hamlet, premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival in 2008 and can be found on UbuWeb. Please uh, join me in welcoming Angie Quick and Margaret Williamson in conversation. Hello. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great pleasure to be here talking with Margot. I'm a big fan. I've been a fan girl for a while. Aww. Yeah, I've been watching you on the internet. And so it was awesome that this year's show got to come to London. And I've brought everyone I like to see it. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. <laughs> um, okay, so this talk is kind of targeted towards painting and writing. And uh, to start off, I'm for myself, when I'm about to start painting, I kind of call that like my research period, which can last sometimes a month to six months, where like even though I'm at the studio, I'm not necessarily like painting, painting. <gasps> That's exactly how I do it. I was getting the sense that <laughs> that's so it's the most fun thing in the world. Like, especially having worked for so long. At first, I started out just painting and painting. And then I figured out, oh, if you sit in a chair and don't move, you can get a lot more done. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but so now like a table in three hours in an empty space is the most magical thing in the world. I agree. I'm kind of still learning that I like that a lot. There's still the part of you that feels like you're supposed to be producing and making and doing. But actually, I think the stillness and the not doing makes the better painting. Yeah. It, for me, it's been easy because I, I always think, like, who in the world needs a painting by me? <laughs> so... Um, I clean a lot, and then I feel <laughs> more useful. <laughs> um, yeah, because like I'm an avid reader. I love going to the library, constantly getting books to read. But then also, when I'm starting to formulate ideas, I'm writing. I'm note taking. Yeah. So I have like uh, my notebooks, or I have my yellow legal pads, where I can just have like a stream of thought or lists and things happening. So like, yeah. how? What does that look like for you? Exactly the same. It looks like, uh, I guess, like the box you keep all your receipts in for taxes. Mm. For me, it's like a box of notes and garbage. Mm. And my pleasure is figuring out um, if there's any order to that. Mm. And I'm really good at throwing things away. So I throw away anything that doesn't feel... Um, part of a puzzle piece. Mm, okay, so you're like arranging, you're like slowly accumulating like either source material, writing things, and then it's almost like you're creating a map. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, but sometimes, well, I mean, for, for a lot of this work, for half of the work in this show, I made it that way, but mm -hmm. the other half of the work People always mention me with like how I use writing and I was like, but this new work, I don't write at all. And then I realized like, oh, I just wrote in paragraphs. Mm. <laughs> so I have like a lot of paragraphs about the work instead of working in this more fragmented way. 
Yeah, so like, are you actually going back to the written text as reference when you're painting or is it like you're doing like an exorcism while you're writing and it's like it fills you up and then you're ready to paint? I like this idea that an exorcism means you're inviting something in rather yeah. than getting something out. <laughs> I am inviting something in. <laughs> you're like letting something out and then letting something in. Yeah, out. yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, I never pictured art being like emotionally catharsis, cathartic. So for me, I'm, I'm a bit more of a depressive person. I struggle to see meaning. So for me, art is like, it's like, is there order? Is there any meaning? So that's why I'm happy to throw things away if it, it, if it doesn't create part of like some new skeletal DNA situation. Are you really organized? Like, do you file things away or do you have like a sense of like, this is the thing I'm working on the thoughts right now and then like go back and read it? Or is it just something like for myself, um, I feel like I'm writing lots of things down, but I don't actually go back and read it. But the whole writing everything down, it's almost like preparing myself for the moment. So like filling up on all those ideas. Yeah. Um, I guess I go back, uh, when I started writing more in paragraphs, I, it was interesting because writing was never like that for me. Like with painting, if you work very intuitively and conceptually and then intuitively and conceptually, um, you're often very surprised by what comes out at the end. And I sort of thought writing was more like drawing where you know what you're drawing, you know what you're writing, and then you do it. But writing um, in longer form, I realized that when you get to the end, um, there's something surprising there also, just like yep. in painting. So I guess those things I get to at the end stay with me. Um, but it is, yeah, it's funny. It's like almost hard to even, if people looked at the paintings I was working on now, and I'd be like, yeah, I sat in a room for three weeks alone, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't remember what happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this very clear, like, almost when I started painting, I would put, uh, I realized like you'd have this like certainty suddenly about them, but then you'd forget again. So I started putting check marks next to the wall when I was like, oh yeah, that's, that's good. That's art. <laughs> Cause like definitely in 48 hours you'd forget. So I try like not to be fussy and be like, oh yeah, the art was there. I don't remember what happened, but it's okay. A grocery list of like, yeah. I got that, yeah, it's got done, it. it's good. No check marks next to this one. Okay, so what about like, I'm really big about titles. Like that's where I think like, I don't really care to share anything that I write when I'm writing about my, like getting into that headspace and the research that I do. Yeah. But then I love like, getting onto a title and like a title for a series. But yeah. when I was upstairs, your titles are very much just kind of utilitarian. Yeah, well, the, the upstairs, it's, uh, it's from two different series. One series is I could see everything and the titles in that were very important. Mm. And then in the other series, which are more the rooms and the more full, bigger paintings, uh, it's from a series that, um, I guess I was calling table and chair. Mm. So everything in that series, I was just like, I was just so, the paintings just felt like the antithesis of words. I just wanted to get away from words so much mm. that I didn't even want words for paintings. Okay, yeah. I mean, for titles. But I was looking at your titles. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's so poetic. The so delicious you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. That, that you can create that like in in the I could see everything where the titles were important like I think for instance I had um I had a residency at the AGO and you don't want to bring your paintings in so you're working in different ways and I remember I just put all the titles I had in a in alphabetical order and I was like oh like I didn't even realize they were like 
we built a new justice archway. I thought I could see the whole universe. Like, I didn't realize even that they were sentences and they were all I, we, them, they. Um, but anyway, I was going to tie, I was going to go back to your work, but I got lost. That's okay. Yeah. So like for me, like sometimes, um, like humor is really important to me. So I get a lot of entertainment from the titles I come up with or like sometimes what happens within the painting and like, I don't, I don't. <laughs> um, and sometimes the titles don't have anything to do with the painting, but the titles came about from something that occurred while I was making the paintings. That's amazing. So that's, that's what I was actually going to say. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, so for instance, like we built a new justice archway. Like, I don't even remember where that came from, if it came from a dream. And, you know, I think I had the title first, and then I made a painting, or maybe I even made a painting of an archway that was utopian and joyful. And then, and then I called it just literally, we made a new justice archway. And then, but then it's awful, like, to have the title and the painting be the same thing and I threw the painting away <laughs> and then I in like you know a 50 anniversary of the Pope Time magazine or something there was like a I, I love the pre-renaissance and there was a painting of two two figures um, being hung upside down and I just I was like that's the painting so I just repainted it um, but it, it is fun. It's like that's the poetry, the, the making those connections and, and finding the humor or the... Yeah. I like the idea of how, like... Because um, often people will go to a title to give them direction or a sense of, like, meaning or, yeah, like, into the piece of work. And I almost like the idea that it, it's almost absurd. That here's this title, here's the painting, they both coexist and yet they have nothing to do with each other, but because they exist next to each other, they now form a new meaning that's kind of outside of my hands and belongs to the viewer. Yeah. So I like that. And then a lot of my titles come from texting with friends and dialogue and talking, and I'll just be like, oh, that like they're very personal to my life, whereas my paintings, I don't feel any kind of sense that I'm depicting my emotions or something of my life. Yeah, I love your titles. Like, I'm just suddenly, I'm suddenly jealous of your titles. I'm like, <laughs> I just finished 20 paintings last week. Oh no, like three weeks ago. It, I, I took a vacation in between, but uh, mm. um, like all of the paintings are just l such literal names. It, it's funny, like you, I just, I just hated the word suddenly. Like I didn't want any names, but, but the titles can just be so beautiful and generous to like offer something more. But, but, but I guess the, the paintings, like half of this show upstairs and the paintings I've been working on, they're just so, they're just so not giving any more than they're giving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. You you got to. Uh, I I feel like I'm always kind of following behind the art, and I have to like obey what it's what it's telling me to do a little yeah, bit. And I'm yeah. like, all right, all right. We hate poetry now. That's fine. <laughs> we hate symbols. We don't like people anymore. <laughs> okay, so like along those lines, when you think about your like written vocabulary and your visual vocabulary, do those like a line or are those different things totally different maybe that's what maybe that's what happened like so the paintings i've made for the last four or five years um like i just can't stand the idea of symbols so like i want the rose to be the same as the garbage on the ground like i want they both show light um like this I is your utilitarian <laughs> the rose and the garbage, they're the same. Well, the utilitarian, but also like there's something there's something really wonderful about being freed from what we agree something means mm -hmm. to what we can decide it means later. You can I think you can you know, that's sometimes that's the trouble with painting people, like 
people are so excited to see people in a painting. Um, and people are so meaningful to people. <laughs> but there is something interesting about about valuing everything, like valuing a rock and valuing a tree and, 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 and remembering like it's all atoms, like it's all, we're all made of the same things, even the rocks. And, and to, but any writing I do, like it's nothing but symbols, you know, it's like, it's so funny in my studio, I'm like, I hate symbols. And somebody was there doing an interview and they're like, you have, you, the only thing you have in your studio is seven books on symbols. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah. But, uh, but it's nice working in different mediums because in one medium you can be freed from something in another medium and then you get to think about it. Like there's a really, I mean, I always like that, uh, the very famous painting from Manet when, where, um, it, just like, it was just like all the other famous French paintings at the time, except all the other painters, the naked women, were symbols of purity or France or blah, blah, blah. And in Manet's painting, you know, they had clothes on, but, or maybe they didn't, but they, were, they had names. They were specific people and they were prostitutes. And, and it's like, no, that's, that's, that's a little bit more interesting to to think about what we really have here. Like, what do we have? I'm always kind of interested in that. Um, so like in your the paintings upstairs, I was interested in the idea of your perspective. It's like you have this, like the viewer has like a God perspective or a third person perspective within it. And um, I then, I was in, during the pandemic, I got really interested in Vermeer's paintings because they are these like lonely interiors and you have like a singular person reading a letter. Yeah. And so then when I saw your work where there's a lot of depictions of writing or yeah. the idea that something or some communication, whether it's the laptop or books or notes put on to the fridge or something yeah. like that. So that's not really a question, but do you want to talk something answer. within that? <laughs> so the first painting I made that kind of helped start this series, uh, Jessica Bradley was uh, the person who showed the work for the first time, just one of the, one of the paintings, the table and chair. No, it was an earlier painting from another series, but it helped the bananas painting. I stopped being funny. I stopped painting bananas. Um, but that painting... I was working on the series I made, I Could See Everything, and the idea was like, I, I can't, I, the work formed when I was up in the Yukon in the fall when it was becoming winter, and it did feel like, I was thinking about another project, but when I was up there, suddenly um, I understood painting better. Like the days were so bright and clear and ugly, and the nights were so dark and quick and deep and confusing and abstract. And I was always trying to figure out how to combine the, the you know, painting's abstraction with its flatness. And something about the Yukon, I was like, oh, I want to figure out how to put them together. Um, so it, there was something fun about the abstraction and the darkness and the fantasy of painting and the escapism and the, the fear and the promise, and then there's something interesting about, oh, this is paint on a flat surface. Um, you can escape, you're right here. And there's something nice about that, but sort of the one escape painting that was really tangible was, um, it's a painting called, it's upstairs, but it's called That Night I Painted in the Kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so content-wise, I was picturing in the day, you were brave enough to think about the night, but during the night, you sort of sought the comforts of reality. And the table, it's like there's a magazine and there's a computer and then there's a newspaper. It's like, yeah, that's the whole world. Like you can, you still can see everything, but you're seeing, you're, you're trying to see real things, not, not uh, fantasies of a better world or nightmares of the world as it is, you know? And then just listening to you, I'm like, oh, those are all great titles. 
I was like, that'd be a great title. That'd I've, be a great I've, title. I've, I've left the good titles behind. It's you. It's for you now. You can have all the good titles. <laughs> Sorry, you were gonna add something though to it. No, no, I was just gonna add. Wow, I don't know if I answered your question, but I, I didn't actually an ask you a question. I just said some stuff at you, and you said some great stuff back at me. So thanks. <laughs> um, so, is there a way that you like writing? Like for myself, um, I never learned how to handwrite, and then at like 27, I taught myself to handwrite. Oh, what do you mean? Like I printed always. And so I never, never did cursive. cursive. Yeah. And so then I started doing cursive and I realized that I could think differently oh. in cursive and I found it more like painting. I've never heard of anyone doing cursive. <laughs> but it make, when you're writing, because printing feels more like a stop, right? It's always like a, right. each, each letter is a stop. Yeah. Whereas when you're doing cursive, it's flowing, and it's I'm, the same as I'm when you're... I'm such a computer person. Yeah, this is what I was wondering, yeah. because there's so many depictions of laptops or like a phone, so I was yeah. wondering if you're more of a digital, like you're typing. Yeah. I, my, a good friend of mine gave me a tarot reading, and she's like, only write in a notebook. And I was like, okay. So I'm like... I'm writing in a notebook now. It's really weird. I'm like, I don't know what happened. I wrote in a notebook. I don't know where the notebook is. <laughs> <laughs> so back to the very first question when I asked if you're organized, so the yeah. answer was no. I'm very organized. <laughs> okay. I really am. I mean, I, yeah, I come from a very disorganized place, but I think because of that, I really, I'm very curious about order and I love order and People are, like, I don't have a junk drawer, you know, like, I'm kind of, I'm not clean, but I'm pretty, people are pretty surprised how, how ordered I live, you know, um, but, but yeah, notebooks, I don't know, they go in a stack somewhere, I don't know, they're, it's clean, but I don't, it's very confusing, I can do anything on a computer, I don't understand any paper. Oh, I just understood my paintings <laughs> and my problem with doing taxes. Um, okay, so for myself, when I'm painting, I have like a running dialogue in yeah. my head and words are super important. So like there's the period where I'm writing wow. stuff down. Wait, wait a second. When you're painting, while you're painting, words are important? Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. How so? Like, I will just be stuck on a phrase that it has popped into my head, or there'll be a certain, and it's not like I'm necessarily creating a narrative within my painting, but the, it's like the dialogue is so present between me and the painting that I feel words as I'm painting. That's so interesting. So for me, I'm, uh, like, I'm pretty lucky. Like, I have a really, I can have a really empty mind. Like, I have no words in my head often. Um, for instance, I don't know what to say, <laughs> but I did when one of the paintings that's upstairs, for instance, I hadn't been painting for maybe a year and, and then in my head it was like, treat, 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 treat. And I was like, treat, 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 treat. Like that's literally the only thing in my head. But it's, it's like, like an, no thought. An like incantation. Right? Like it's this thing that's happening between me and the work and yeah. it feels very but much once like I started painting it was more like a command once i started painting it stopped it starts saying tree, 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 tree. <laughs> but that's so interesting i can't even imagine painting with words in my head so you write stuff down like you wrote these paragraphs for these paintings yeah. and then you then just start painting and you're in like this meditative state where like what is your source material even, I don't even have to be meditative but I don't Just empty okay <laughs> Like in a really awesome amazing way <laughs> I mean maybe it's not true I don't know <laughs> I don't know um but I do do, I maybe I, I do do all of the work almost before I start. So even though, like all of the words were in my head before I started, or halfway through when I take a break and I spend a couple of weeks just thinking. Um, but I, I mean, that being said, like there's no plan. So it's not like I, 
Like I knew, for instance, I knew in the series I just made now, I knew I was making, I wanted to make like this water exploding. And I made this painting and it was so dark. And I was like, I didn't, I didn't want that at all. And normally I'd be fine with that, but I think I really needed bright, a bright fountain. And so I made it again and it's very bright. And so now I have two paintings that are, but like I have no idea what the paintings are gonna look like. And so that's fun because it's, so it's not thinking exactly, but it's like the, it's at least it's the pleasure of what happens next, what happens next, what happens next, what do I do now? And it's not any correction, it's just like one thing at a time slowly. Um, but it's nice. I mean, you maybe you might be more of a natural writer if you're if you have words in your head while you're making the paintings. Um, like I would say, I relate to the painting idea of like I have no idea what a painting is going to look like when I start, and that's part of the pleasure and the pain of painting yeah. is that you are just. Can you imagine how boring it would be if you knew? What you no, were it would. Be, yeah, it'd be terrible. Oh my god. That but it's like so horrible. The it constant means... prom problematizing of the painting is like beautiful, and it's yeah. the reason I love painting. But it's also like one of the most like I'm crying on the studio couch kind of You're thing. Crying? You don't cry in the studio. I love the studio. I love the studio too, and maybe I love crying in the studio. <laughs> Probably. So I, don't you, have, like... I don't have many feelings. <laughs> Wait, what, what, but what are you crying about? Like something not working or, um, or feelings? Feelings or feeling like I'm failing the painting, that sense of it, like where I'm like Why giving are all. Why so the boss? <laughs> <laughs> like you don't feel like you fail, like when you're, you don't feel like you fail at all in the studio. Uh, I was telling Jessica this on the drive here today that like probably five years ago, you know, you want, like I, I never quite, I never quite understood that art was an amazing thing to do, but I was so compelled by it and, uh, and I just wanted art to be everything and, um, and you know, being like a totally failed activist, like you want you want art to have meaning or purpose, or you want at least this thing you're giving so much time to to be amazing. Um, and so I was, I would always be a bit disappointed. I think at the end, not during. During I like, I'm pretty good at not being fussy or bossy or something. Like, but, but at the end, I would sometimes be a little disappointed because I'd be like, ah, they're just fucking paintings. And but the last few years, I'm like. They're just paintings. You're just a painter. Relax. And I don't feel disappointed at all anymore. And I don't feel um, bad. Like I, I feel like oh these. I feel almost more respectful of the paintings. Like oh these are the you guys came about, and mm -hmm. I did an okay job. I didn't sleep all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I feel I feel much. Uh, I feel much more content about it and not, not, um, yeah, but I don't, I mean, especially with the, the way I paint, even conceptually, like my idea is I'm a painter and I'm trying to make something like that's the narrative. And so how can I go wrong? Like if, if my brush strokes are terrible, that's part of it. Like you just accept everything that happens in the studio. Like for me, it's like, I almost don't, I care less about the end result of the painting. And I, I like so much more the process. I like so much more the build up to painting and then being in the studio and painting, but it does feel like a very personal dialogue, me and the paintings and it can, feel wounding at times. It's really nice. That sounds beautiful and even kind of sexy. Like, I'm like, oh, the paintings, my paintings are just the boss. Like, I'm just like the <laughs> servant of my paintings. It's not sexy at all. <laughs> but I relate to the, no, I get that. Cause it's not like, it's like the painting is in charge the whole time. But I, I think I would like that a little, I think I, I think I can be in charge now too, but um, like with your paintings, I mean, I'm sure everyone in this room knows your paintings because you're from here and, um, but 
your paintings have so much life and movement in them. Like mine are almost the opposite. Like I don't, I don't even know, like I can't kind of imagine that. Like what I always want in the world is more time and more space. Like I want so much stillness. I want so much quiet. Like I'm pretty overwhelmed by things. Mm -hmm. And, and with your paintings like this, like how, the, like creating so much movement in a still image is, it's pretty, that's so much tension. Like it's so much life. Like it makes sense that mine are like, mine are like. Do you like listen to music in the studio or are you like in silence? Uh, both, both, both. Because like I listen to music most of the time and I like it, like it feels like dancing in the studio. If I'm doing really well, it's quiet, but I can still paint well listening to anything, you know, like, um, like I was listening to a book about, in the end there, when I was getting a little tired, I was listening to a book about um, unidentified aerial phenomena. So you are listening to words while you're painting. They're I just am, not they're your not words. They're not mine. They're not mine. I mean, not all the time. It's much better if I don't listen to something. Mm. But, and I never listen to anything in the morning when I do more difficult stuff. But sometimes in the afternoon, like I, I usually meditate for 40 minutes and then go back in. And if I meditate, then I, I, I'm okay with no occupying. But once in a while, you have off weeks, you know, and you're tired and gone and you just are like ufos 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 <laughs> <laughs> um do you have like a studio ritual or like a method of like turning yourself on to the painting like or is it just you're there and you're I'm ready to like go that at, at a quiet desk in an empty room that's more sacred to me like the painting studio is kind of an oddly public place and it's um, so those okay. are separate for you. You have your painting studio and then you have like a office area or somewhere like a study that you go to sit no, at a just, desk or? I just mean like every three or six months when you're doing the really deep, quiet work, like I can turn my studio into that place or I can go to a residency. Um, so sometimes I'm like that with the paintings where I have to, especially in the beginning, I have to go really deep and then it's very frustrating having to get out again. Um, but usually by the end, I'm like, like I'm, I'm always happy to, by the end, I'm always happy to have people in. I'm always happy to hear what anyone says. It's, it's not like a, a concern about people seeing the paintings. It's more like, um, it's just jarring going in and out of depth, I think. When do you feel most vulnerable? When you're in the stage where you're researching and thinking or when you're like actively making a painting? Uh, you say vulnerable, I say angry. <laughs> like if I'm, if I'm in like that, like if I'm in the three hours or the three weeks where I'm really getting deep somewhere, like I just resent every th external situation. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty easy. <laughs> I like the anger. I, yeah, I'm very, I'm very protective of my time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I think you have to be as an artist, yeah, yeah. right? And respecting that time. Yeah. Um, I feel like I've, how much, yeah. We've been talking for three hours yet. You want me to wrap it up? <laughs> I'm wrapping it up right now. That was it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that went exactly as planned. That was amazing. Thank you both so very much. Really appreciate that. Um, we've got um, uh, maybe about uh, five minutes for questions. Are there any? And I will. What I'll do is I can run to you with this microphone. If you've got any questions, are there any questions for Margot and or Angie? No, no one. Test, test, test. Okay. 
So I would like to know how is your uh, the the people who inspire you in terms of visual arts evolved over time, and that's a question for both of you, like the artists you look up to that you that make you feel wonder kind of thing. Like who are they? Like who are the artists that we love? Um, like I love Tracy Emin is my favorite artist, which I think makes sense that I like suffering and vulnerability. So <laughs> um, I like I get a lot of influence from films, poetry, writing, and uh, and then a lot of painters. But I'm just gonna say Tracy Emin for right now. <laughs> That's a hard question. Um, I'm always really curious about everyone, so I find it really interesting what's in people's heads. Um, but I do find painting and poetry a pretty natural um, match. So um, I feel it's like always a mutual inspiration, poetry and painting. Um, but I find film and books probably the most helpful. But I have a, I have like a huge da database of, of like probably any painter I've ever heard of. Like I'm just, I'm just dying always to, like for me, I really like to, just because I didn't come from an art background exactly. I, I like anything, anything I see or read or watch or listen to that makes me feel like, oh, that person should be doing that. That person should be making that painting. That that person should be writing. Like Kafka was my first. I was like, oh, thank God Kafka wrote. Like I'm glad Kafka wrote. And that like that's what I find most helpful. Yeah, I feel like I'm always thirsty for things. Like I'm always on the lookout and wanting of. Yeah. Thank you. Next it's question. Like, your curiosity is so helpful. Um, I'd love to hear how each of you individually respond to like this notion that um, painting is dead or like an antiquated medium. Well, I think we probably haven't paid that much attention to it. <laughs> I think you touched on it when you were talking about um, that it's a flat surface where basically anything can occur. And to me, that's endless. So how could it ever, that medium, die? Like, it's just, to me, a philosophical space where uh, so much can be presented. It's almost undying, I would say. <laughs> but it is also, like, it is interesting working in kind of an old-fashioned medium where, mm -hmm. um, like, for me, one of the reasons I paint is um, a lot of the... Um, uh, a lot of my family or where I came from, like art was just such a foreign thing. And I always wanted to like at least have some offer of accessibility. And I don't feel like that needs to be intellectual accessibility. It needs to be like um, medium or so from, and I was like, oh, they're flat. They're not going to take up so much room. <laughs> But I, but any medium, I feel like it has its virtues and limitations, and and uh, and they're different. Like one's not superior to another, um, but they come like every medium comes with different friends, and it comes with different things you see and different things you learn. And um, like it's interesting that painting isn't time based, or that time functions different in it. Like that's just amazing. So. But, you know, um, I guess I haven't been in school for a while, so I haven't heard the paintings dead for a while. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my god, people buy paintings? I had, I, I really, I lucked out. <laughs> I'm such a moron. But it's like a very public art form like you're it's just on the wall you can't there hide it. yeah you can't hide it. like some of my siblings like writing and like that can be very private you don't have to ever show someone you're writing but when i like making these paintings it was just like you yeah there it's all out there like that's a really i i assume you're a painter but that's a really that's the amazing thing like 
Some people think that that's why painters come out earlier and younger, because you can't defensively hide it for years and years and, and think no one's going to understand this. Like you have so much experience where you can't hide your giant painting. <laughs> We have time, I think, for one more question. There we go. Hi. Hi. I was wondering how you know you're done with the more detailed components of your painting. Because uh, for, me, for me, I, I think that's fine. <laughs> and, that's 100% uh, true. And then if there's as much intention in the more abstract parts or if they're kind of a finishing touch? Um, no, there's just as much in intention for sure. But also it's, it's just that thing again of I'm a painter trying to paint something. So I feel like nobody in the world needs me to depict to, to something accurately. Like no one's asking me to do that. Um, so when I'm painting, I'm like, and this is where I wandered, you know, and that's fine. Like it's... Um, and it helps allow that flatness of the canvas a little bit too, but sometimes the the more abstract places are more challenging than the than the representational places because it is a slightly different thing. Thank you. Well, Angie, Margot, thank you so much for speaking to one another and letting us listen in. Thank you to everybody for coming out and, and be sure to check out the exhibitions upstairs, including Margot Williamson Interiors. There's also a catalog that goes with that exhibition, which I urge you to check out in the shop. And thanks for coming. Thank you.